Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A fight at River Center Mall ends in a chase. A man jumping into the river. Now, two people are in custody. And President Donald Trump in Florida following his impeachment and the sign of a big spending bill to keep the government open. But first, we have breaking news out of the city's south side, where right now there is still a heavy police presence. Police say an off-duty officer was run over and killed in the parking lot of a business while trying to protect the peace. Our Alicia Beretta is live off of I-37 South and Hot Wheels Boulevard. Now, Alicia, what have investigators told you so far? Well, as you can imagine, it's a tough um, call tip for these officers to answer to and have to investigate this morning, but nonetheless, they're here. And the presence, very heavy presence, uh, multiple units surrounding each angle of this IHOP, but it's actually on the opposite side of where I'm standing, where that unfortunate incident took place earlier this morning. Here's what we know so far. An SAISD off-duty officer showed up for his shift as overnight security here at the IHOP on Hot Wheels Boulevard. We're told a fight broke out inside the restaurant and later it spilled out into the parking lot. The off-duty SAISD officer tried to stop the fight, but in the parking lot is where that officer got assaulted. We're told two suspects got into a vehicle. It's a gray sedan and ran him over intentionally. The suspects did flee. They did run away, but the vehicle we know is still on scene. Again, that's on the opposite side of where you're looking at. SAPD has some people detained. Um, we know they're not being charged as of at as of this moment, they are being questioned. In total, we witnessed three people transported downtown. And so far, what we know from this officer that unfortunately died here on scene, he's an SAISD officer, 27 year veteran, and we're still waiting to find out more information um, just across the street. I'm trying to see if we can still see him. He is still on scene. Um, SAISD Police Chief Jose Joe Curiel on the scene right now. Obviously a tough morning for officers. Um, we know that one of the um, SAPD vehicles also has some damage on the front left corner. So there again, we're seeing heavy police presence from every angle of the IHOP because it is a big scene. Um, could we perhaps show them? So right now they were taking pictures of that unit. The damage that we see, again, to the front left tire of the unit. Um, a big scene here out this morning. So we're going to be waiting on more information, more updates. But if you're headed this way this morning, again, we're on 37 South and Hot Wells. If you're going to be headed down Hot Wells West, just know that this area will be closed off for the next several hours. So stick with us this morning on GMSA. We will have all the updates. Max, Stephanie, back to you. All right. Thank you, Alicia. Again, we will check in with you later in the newscast. And taking a look outside with live cam. It is 51 degrees to start your Saturday morning, 6.03 right now. But coming in, driving into work today, a lot of fog. There was patchy fogs, and it was actually difficult to see today. So, Sarah, is that something we were expecting, and is this going to yeah, go away? it is something we were expecting. I'm happy to say Adam Kasky forecast for the fog last <laughs> night this morning. But we are going to be seeing the fog stick around, at least during the morning hours. But quickly here, we'll be able to see the sunshine. It's been a damp couple of my last 24 hours or so uh, with areas of fog and light rain. Uh, right now we still do have some fog. There has been some improvement just in the last hour or so. Humidity is at 93% and we're at 50 degrees. As we take a look at visibility elsewhere, you can see it's still pretty bad up at Bernie Stage Airfield where visibility is down to a quarter of a mile, down to a half a mile visibility in New Braunfels and temperatures this morning on the cool side in the upper 40s, low 50s and in the 30s up in the hill country a little bit cooler up in the hill country. Today is going to be a nice and cool day for us. Pretty comfortable outside. I went ahead and uh, busted out the Christmas graphics because I mean, how often do we get to use them? No, it's not going to snow today, but we are going to see beautiful sunshine, 64 degrees in the afternoon with a north breeze at about five miles per hour. I've got to look ahead to your Christmas forecast in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. A disturbance at River Center Mall leads to a chase and one teen jumping in the water of the Riverwalk. Police say three teens were on the run at about eight last night following what they're calling an assault from a shop inside that mall. Now, one of the teens ran out and jumped about 30 feet from the street level into the river embankment. The teen who jumped into the river was taken to the hospital. The other two teens were taken to the juvenile corrections facility. Investigators say all three are facing charges of unlawfully carrying a weapon, assault and making terroristic threats. 
And another man is in police custody after an investigation into a string of convenience store robberies here in San Antonio. 24 year old native Nathaniel Williams is facing two aggravated robbery charges and an evading arrest charge. His arrest comes after police caught up with the 23 year old Nathaniel Taylor. Now, police say that they believe Taylor was part of a group that crisscrossed the city, robbing more than half a dozen convenience stores. We're told the suspects would take cash, cell phones, jewelry, and even employees' personal property. An arrest affidavit lists Williams and Taylor as the suspects accused of stealing a gun earlier this week. Also, in that specific case, they stole a wallet, keys, and two cell phones. President Donald Trump heading south to Florida after signing a $1.4 trillion spending bill and his impeachment. But plans for his speedy trial back in Washington remain clouded. Senate leaders have failed to agree on procedures and perhaps new witnesses for the trial. At the same time, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has delayed sending the articles of impeachment to the Senate. President Donald Trump still expected to be acquitted of both charges in the Senate, where Republicans have the majority. Proceedings are expected to begin in January. Forensic officials have confirmed that the Austin mother who vanished just last week was found strangled to death outside Houston. Austin police chiefs say Heidi Broussard's one-month-old daughter, who also disappeared, was found safe at the same home where the mother's body was found. Right now, one person is in custody facing charges of kidnapping and tampering with a corpse. Authorities say the baby, that one-month-old, was found in good health. And guests aboard a Carnival cruise ship in Cozumel had to be evacuated from parts of the ship after it collided with another cruise liner. Now one person was hurt. Investigators say the ships appear to be safe with damage on one of the decks and the bow of the Carnival Glory. Now a statement from Carnival Cruise Line state that they are assessing the damage to both ships. The Carnival Glory expected to arrive at the Port of New Orleans by tomorrow morning. Wow, that's crazy video. Yeah, uh, the damage looks pretty bad, but they say they're safe yeah, for now. Just one person. Yeah, that's true. All right, 607, 50 degrees out. And our San Antonio Spurs get ready to take on the Clippers tonight at home. We're going to have a preview. And we are now in the age of smartphones. Everyone has a camera at their hand at all times. But remember those old Polaroid cameras where you can get a photo right out of the camera? They are making a comeback just in time for Christmas. Yeah, those were fun. Those were so much fun. Yeah, I, I, I used to have one. And it wasn't even one of the old ones. It was like the, like... It came back, like mm -hmm. the reboot, I guess, and here's another one, so it'll be interesting to see. One of my biggest pet peeves is I don't have enough, like, hard photos. Oh, yeah, that you could actually, like, give to somebody mm -hmm. as opposed to, like, sending a text or an email. Hmm, we're going to check it out. <laughs> we'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back 610 this Saturday morning. There's going to be a lot of people traveling this weekend. Oh, yes. There are going to be a lot of people traveling this weekend. In fact, I've got to look at the uh, travel forecast for us. There's really only one trouble spot, and that's going to be in the southeastern portion of the United States. So the Atlanta airport where gotcha. there might be some heavy rain later on uh, this weekend. But generally here in San Antonio, things will be nice and quiet for us. It's 50 degrees outside right now. It's a damp morning. We had light rain pretty much all day yesterday. And and that's trickling into these early morning hours, so just some areas of drizzle and some road spray this morning as you're heading out. 50 degrees outside. Visibility is improving at the airport up to about four miles just a while ago. It was down to half a mile, and you can see that there's still some intense fog out toward New Braunfels, where visibility is down to half a mile, down to a quarter of a mile at Bernie Stage Airfield and in Kerrville. So up in the hill country and the lower level uh, lying valleys around San Antonio, you could expect some more denser fog at the moment. It's 51, though, in New Braunfels and in Canyon Lake. A nice cool morning for us here. 51 JBSA Randolph. Even colder up in the hill country, where they've had clear skies uh, in the overnight hours and been able to cool down effectively 39 in Kerrville and 37 in Lost Maples. These temperatures are probably what we're going to have in San Antonio as we start the day tomorrow because again, we'll have more clear skies. Let's take a look at the radar and satellite locally again, not picking up on any drizzle, but it is picking up on that fog starting to dissipate. All of the light rain is well to the south now near the Corpus Christi area. And again, look at all the clearing up in the hill country. So very shortly here, we'll be able to see sunshine probably by the mid morning hours and into the afternoon total sunshine for us and that's going to make for a beautiful day this Saturday clearing around 10 o'clock temperatures will stay in the 50s for the first part of the day we'll be at around 60 degrees around the lunch hour and then 64 for the high today sunny 
comfortable north wind at five miles per hour. Tonight it gets cold quickly. Temperatures are going to plummet into the 40s, so don't be caught without that jacket this evening. And on top of that, I do think we could see a very light freeze up in the hill country, Kerrville, Ingram, Rock Springs, Lakey area. But here in San Antonio, we should stay above freezing as we head into the overnight hours. Here's your Christmas sneak peek. Tuesday, it's going to be warm. Don't expect a white Christmas, okay? But we are going to be seeing comfortable, uh, chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons with mostly sunny skies, both on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Here's a look at the next several days for us. I want to actually get back on there and talk about tomorrow morning. We are going to have some morning fog and drizzle, uh, but then we'll be able to see an afternoon sunshine. So pretty much a copy and paste forecast for both today and tomorrow. Hey, by the way, winter officially starts tonight with the winter solstice. But as you can see, as we head into Christmas, it's not really going to feel very much like winter more like spring with those temperatures in the 70s uh, for highs. And then as far as rain chances go, I would suggest washing your car after tomorrow morning's fog and drizzle. So tomorrow morning's fog and drizzle is still going to create some road spray in the morning hours. So if you want a completely clean car, I would wait until Sunday afternoon. I can wait. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, of course. So winter officially starts tonight. Yeah, it does. 10, 19 p.m. 10, 19 yeah. p.m. And then Christmas, everyone everyone always wants a white Christmas. I would say Santa's bringing us the warmth. That's his present for us. I yeah. Think that's a possibility, Max. I think that's a good way to look at yeah, it. Yeah, it'll be good for the kids who have things to do outside. Totally. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 614, 50 degrees out. And do you need a last-minute Christmas gift idea? So we have some more on new old style cameras that develop physical photos are Polaroids. Polaroids. <laughs> I love Polaroids. I, I do think too. they're so cool. I'm glad they're making a comeback. And next, big question Spurs fans are going to answer. Can Patty Mills pull out an amazing performance again? Oh, that's not actually the question. The question is, can the Spurs get a win streak going? Take it on the Clippers tonight. We're going to have a preview next in sports. And looking at your winning lotto numbers, we have pick three, two, four, six, fireball nine, daily four, nine, one, 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 fireball seven. Cash five is seven, 10, 28, 29, 31. Mega millions, three, 20, 23, 35, 60, and 16. Mega player three, good luck. We'll be right back. Well, the Spurs coming off a big win, but they have another big test tonight. San Antonio Spurs back in action here in San Antonio, and we will see a familiar foe, Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers, coming back to the Alamo City. The Spurs have been earning their way back to respectability after their big come-from-behind win against the Brooklyn Nets. At the top of the West, though, the Clippers' second-best team in the conference, and in their last visit to the Alamo City, they lost to the Spurs. That was back on November 29th. All of this after they had lost 10 of their last 11 games, including an eight-game losing streak, the longest in the Popovich career. Since that 107-97 win against the Clips, the Spurs have won five of the last eight games, and that includes this big come-from-behind victory, 118-105 to against the Brooklyn Nets. I can't say when we play, you know, the teams that got all the hype, whatever, uh, we play, you know, a little better. I mean, we're woke right away and then you know you play teams that are not hyped uh, as much and you know we could find ourselves you know falling off a little bit but you know coach does a great job you know to you know have that appropriate fear and understand that everybody's here for a reason and the game against the clippers tips off tonight at 7 30 here at the at&t center and next up time to hit the field it is do or die weekend for the dallas cowboys Cowboys facing off in Philadelphia against the Eagles tomorrow. And right now, Dallas is a one and a half point favorite. It could determine who makes the playoffs and who starts golfing and hitting vacation early. Both teams come into this game tied at seven and seven records. The Cowboys owning the tiebreaker right now. They had that win against the Eagles and the Cowboys have an undefeated divisional record at four and oh, kind of a testament to how weak the division is. Nevertheless, with so much on the line this Sunday, the NFC East title and a trip to the NFL postseason, both teams looking at the showdown as a playoff game like they should. But before that game, we have three NFL games today. Houston Texans are one of them, and they can win the AFC South and clinch a playoff spot with a win. Still possible to even lock up that playoff spot, even if they lose to the Buccaneers. But let's be honest, they would probably rather win against the Bucs and divisional rival Tennessee Titans 
to close out the season. The game against the Bucks starts at noon today. And great news to report. Former Jefferson High School Mustang, Texas Longhorn, and Atlanta Falcon, Tommy Nobis, now a finalist for the centennial class of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. According to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, the Blue Ribbon Battle trimmed the list to 20 seniors, 10 contributors, 8 coaches, and the Falcons' first overall pick in the 1966 draft was one of them. Nobis played 11 years, went to five Pro Bowls before passing away in December of 2017. Now. We wait to see if he makes the 15 member class, the centennial class of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. How cool. Mm -hmm. well, well, lesson in history there. Yeah, I, I didn't know he was in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Jefferson. All right, 621, 50 degrees out. And printed photos making sort of a comeback thanks to some new digital instant cameras that's coming up after the break. Good morning and welcome back. 624 this Saturday morning and odds are if you're like us here at GMSA, you take most of your pictures with your smartphone. But remember the old days with the old Polaroid cameras and they brought the photo right out of the back of the camera? Yeah, that's nice. Those are the good old days. Yeah. But don't worry, they're back. <laughs> Consumer reporter Marilyn Morris shows us the latest models of today's 12 on your side holiday help. When's the last time you actually printed photos? Now you can have photos in an instant with cameras that are a blast from the past. Instant cameras, they come in two types. There's Instax, which is a lot like the Polaroid cameras that you probably remember. And then there's something called Zinc for zero ink, which is basically a little bit like a photo printer attached to a digital camera. With Instax film, the chemicals needed to develop the photos are in the piece of paper. You just wait for it to come to life. It actually looks a lot like maybe some of the filters that you would use use on smartphone apps that you're sort of trying to digitally fake, only you're getting it for real. With Zinc cameras, photos emerge ready to go, and Zinc film has a little bonus. The other fun part is that you can actually peel the back off on most of these and they're stickers, so you can put them up anywhere you'd like. Zinc cameras also save your images to an SD card in the camera, so you can make as many prints as you want. Consumer Reports checked out six cameras and they did find some drawbacks to instant photography. With these instant cameras, you're not going to get high quality photos by any stretch. And it can get a bit expensive. Expect to pay anywhere from 66 cents to $1.15 for each standard color instant Stacks print and about 50 cents for each zinc print. You could try buying the film in bulk to save money. So which cameras does Consumer Reports like most? The best all-around option is the $99 Fujifilm Instax Square 6. They found the Fujifilm Instax Mini 9 was cheaper and fun for about $60. For zinc cameras, CR likes the Canon Ivy Click for $80. With your holiday help, Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, what are your thoughts? I mean, I like it. It's a nice throwback. You throwing it on the Christmas list? Uh, well, I've had one. <laughs> I think that was a soft no. <laughs> it's a soft no. Not yet. Um, it got pricey when I used to have a Polaroid, mm. and uh, you know, because I wanted to, to use it, and so I keep having to buy cartridges. At least in these models, though, you have your digital image as well. So. True, the SD card. Yeah, that's a good plus. What about you? I, I, so I grew up in a family with uh, scrapbooks. Uh -huh. We love scrapbooks. We love like actual pictures. And I want to kind of go back to that. Yeah. But for the same price, I could just download the pictures and print them at like Walmart. I'm not trying to be a <laughs> Grinch. I'm just saying. 627, 50 degrees out. In our next half hour forward, recalling more than half a million vehicles for a problem that's led to crashes and injuries. We're going to tell you which vehicles were affected. And this time of year is a time to be thankful for all that we have. Thanks to a special local church project, children in a community suffering from poverty got to celebrate Christmas a little early. We're gonna tell you how a member of our team is helping out people in Mexico. And Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker, yay! Already raking in millions of dollars at the box office. Lots of hype surrounding this film, as it should. We have more <laughs> from the actors and directors on what it took to put this movie together. And a review from our Stephanie Serna. Yeah, I loved it. Good morning and happy Saturday. 6.31 this Saturday morning. It is 50 degrees out there. Thanks for joining us. A lot of people want to see that white Christmas. They want the cold. Well, that I'm was not one of those people. Yeah, I, I, I sort of am, but mm. now you know that I have a little one. I, I kind of want it to be sunny.
for her, or at least, you know, mild temperatures. Well, you might get that wish, right, sir? Right. Hey, Santa doesn't discriminate. <laughs> He'll make his way here, but it is chilly outside right now with temperatures generally in the uh, upper 40s and low 50s. You'll notice a very stark temperature difference from the hill country uh, and out toward Del Rio where temperatures are in the 30s. It's 49 in San Antonio right now, and then you go to the south and to the east toward Beeville and temperatures are start to get in the 50s. We'll warm up today after this morning fog, so we will see sunshine. We'll have a very pleasant weekend uh, throughout the rest of the weekend with temperatures Nice and comfortable in the afternoon, and I will have a preview of your Christmas forecast. Unfortunately, it does look like we're going to be a little bit on the warm side for Christmas, which many people don't necessarily appreciate. But let's take a look at airport delays around the nation because uh, it is a very big travel weekend. We do have that one system in the Gulf of Mexico right now that's producing uh, the possibility for very heavy rain in the southeastern portion of the United States. But I'm happy to report that around uh, the nation, there's no delays at the airports right now and even around the local airports around Texas you are good to go from DFW to Loveville down to Harlingen in San Antonio. I'll be back with a look at that forecast in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Developing right now, an off-duty SAISD officer is dead, and there is a heavy police presence on the city's south side. Earlier this morning, units were dispatched to the 700 block of Hotwell Boulevard. That's just off I-37 South. Now, police say the officer was run over intentionally, and this morning they are still searching for those suspects involved. Alicia Barra is live on the scene with the latest. Alicia, do we know about the officer who was killed? Well, we're still waiting to learn his name, but we do know he was a 27 year veteran with SAISD's police department, as well as the overnight security guard here at this IHOP. And what we know now from the situation, we're told a fight broke out inside the restaurant. That officer tried to stop it. He tried to step in and he was able to get those that were fighting out into the parking lot. But there things only escalated this morning. Police say the officer was assaulted in the parking lot when two suspects got into a gray sedan intentionally ran him over. Those suspects abandoned the car on the scene and later ran off. We know several people this morning have been detained for questioning. Right now, no arrests have been made as police actively search for two male suspects. Again, the people involved that they're looking for um, to answer some questions and were in that sedan that they abandoned the sedan are two male suspects. And here on the scene, a lot of pieces to the investigation, but where that incident actually took place is just opposite of where I'm standing, where we see those officers. Um, they're still waiting on the medical examiner to show up. So right now, again, piecing everything together. Um, not much information known about who that officer was, but we know that um, SAISD's police chief, Joe Curiel, he is on the scene, so we're hoping to speak to him later on this morning. But again, obviously a very sensitive time for him and all the officers here on on the scene. Back to you. Thank you, Alicia. The owner of a local health facility, along with the chief operating officer, could now both be facing charges regarding to health care fraud. At the center of the investigation is TPC Family Medicine and Urgent Care. One clinic is in Laredo. The other is on the north side of San Antonio, just off of TPC Parkway. An indictment alleges the owner, 46-year-old Christopher Montoya, and the CEO, the COO, 40-year-old Nancy Almagar, are all the accused. Now, investigators suspect that the two received kickbacks and bribes in exchange for sending patients nasal swabs to a specific lab for testings. They would then get reimbursed from Medicare and other insurance programs. Both the CEO and the owner could each face up to 20 years in prison if they are convicted on each of the four counts against them. Ford Motor Company recalling more than 600,000 cars to fix a hydraulic defect that they say could lead to crashes. Now, the automaker says it's recalling certain versions of the Ford Fusion, Mercury, Mercury Milan, and Lincoln MKZ. The vehicles were all made between February of 2006 and July of 2009. Ford has identified at least 15 accidents that may have happened because of that defect. Those crashes caused at least two injuries. Ford says when the problem happens, it could result in extended brake pedal travel, potentially increasing the risk of a crash. And time now is 636, 49 degrees out. And Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is the big movie at the box office this weekend. We're going to hear from some of the cast and crew on what it took to make the final chapter 
in one of the most popular franchises. This is the last one, right? This is the last movie? That's what we hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and next, how a member of our KSAF team got to deliver Christmas a little early this year to a town that desperately needed some Christmas cheer. And taking a look outside with live cam, 49 degrees for now. It was kind of like a sad day yesterday, or a sad looking day. See, like, I thought it was, it was a perfect day to stay inside and watch TV. That's we, true. We well, well we went days. to see Star Wars, so I guess I shouldn't complain. <laughs> we'll be right back. And welcome back at 640. So Christmas is just a few days away, but thanks to the Oak Hill Spanish Church Project, Manos de Cristo, children in a community 300 miles away got to celebrate a little early. Misael Gomez is a member of the church and a member of our KSAT 12 news team. He drove six and a half hours to hand deliver presents and tells me it's something he looks forward to every year. There is toothbrush, toothpaste, socks. There is a toy for the child. Sometimes they'll throw in some school supplies and candy. This is the 15th year Misael Gomez has traveled all this way to be part of the group that brings 152 shoebox gifts to these children in need. This is Northwest Mexico. This is in Coahuila, the state of Coahuila, and which borders with, Ch with Chihuahua. We're right on the border with the Chihuahuan Desert, actually. So it's very, very dry very arid country. There is a lot of danger still. There's a lot of poverty in this area. That means that the holiday season can be tough, but church members like Miss Ayel, they arrived here to spread the Christmas spirit. The community, it was a very poor community. The kids are so positive. They're so excited. I mean, there was a lot of uh, yelling and screaming and excitement from the kids, and they were just thrilled to be getting a present. The hours of preparation, the drive, and the hundreds of miles, now all worth it after handing these kids their presence. Smiling and ready to take the box home because a lot of times they don't want to open, open them there. They want to take them home because this is the only gift they'll have for Christmas. So they want to put it underneath the tree and have it for Christmas Day so that they can open it. Uh, shout out to Misael. Great mm -hmm. job. I mean, I know he does this every year and he says it's so rewarding. Misael is one of the gems of KSAT. He is so good at his job mm -hmm. and he is always positive. And as you know, in the news business, we deal with a lot of things. Yes. So it's always great to be able to have somebody like Misael on the team. Well, yeah. my thing was he like was very low key about the whole situation. I think mm -hmm. he posted like a picture on Facebook and I started talking to him about it. I was like, this is like a really cool thing uh -huh. you're doing. You're driving all the way down there. Every yeah. year, yeah. And then he was like, yeah, we do it every year. I was like, would you want to do an interview? <laughs> and I'm sure there's opportunities for people to, to do that. And so we'll figure that out for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can help out next time. Definitely. Well, you know what? The weather today, it's going to kind of be all over the map. We're starting off with areas of fog and drizzle, uh, but we are going to be seeing sunshine in the afternoon. And these areas of fog and drizzle are really starting uh, to improve uh, just over the last two hours or so. I was looking out at this, uh, this camera earlier, and you know what? It was completely foggy. It was hard to see anything. And now we can start to see even some stars out there early this morning. So we are seeing visibility improving. It's still pretty bad, though, up in the hill country. So Bernie Stage Airfield seeing a visibility of about a half a mile out in front of you, only a quarter of a mile out in Kerrville, half a mile in New Braunfels as well. As you get outside of the city center, you can see that visibility kind of goes down a little bit. But we will see gradual improvement, and that means sunshine in the afternoon after a day of drizzable conditions yesterday. It's 52 at JBSA Randolph, 48 at San Antonio National Airport, 51 in New Braunfels. Meanwhile, it's a lot cooler up in the hill country. Take a look at that temperatures in the 30s out in Bandera and in Kerrville. Our temperatures in San Antonio will be closer to the upper 30s by the start of the day tomorrow because we'll have clearer conditions this evening. Yesterday was just very cloudy and even locally you can see it's below freezing up in a zona and junction but the ksat 12 viewing area we're all above freezing this morning uh, and we're getting drier air filtering in from the south and from the west this is a look at water vapor and the jet stream there's that system it was a little too far north to produce some very heavy rain here in san antonio but we did see some decent rain yesterday again that drier air filtering in and so that's what's going to lead to our clearing skies as we head into the afternoon Look at that on the future cast. It's going to be nice and sunny uh, by uh, 
the afternoon high temperature time, which is right around at this time of year, about 4 p.m. Uh, 64 degrees for the high uh, today, so it's going to be nice and cool and comfortable. And then notice how quickly we cool off. Winter officially starts with the solstice right around 1020 this evening, and it's going to feel like winter this evening because temperatures will quickly fall into the 40s. If you have any Saturday night plans outside, bring that coat, bring that scarf, bundle up. By tomorrow morning, we'll be in the upper 30s, but I do want to show you the hill country. We are going to have areas of fog, maybe even some drizzle in the morning, so the hill country is going to be even colder tomorrow with temperatures close to freezing. That's where that pink color is, uh, so if you you do live in the hill country, watch out for some frost in the early morning hours. I'll be monitoring for freezing drizzle, but I just don't think it's going to be a major possibility up in the hill country. And then we'll have a mild Christmas week. Christmas Eve is Tuesday. Christmas Day is Wednesday. Temperatures are going to be in the 70s with sunshine, so not totally a white Christmas. As for your holiday travel forecast, throughout this weekend, there's going to be some heavy rain on the southwest portion of the United States. So think about Atlanta, the airport in Atlanta. It's a big hub. Hub, uh, for the nation. So keep in mind that there could be some travel delays uh, today, tomorrow, and possibly even on Monday. But for now, no delays at last check. It is early in the morning, however, and we will have updates on uh, airport delays throughout the morning for you uh, when we return at 8 o'clock. And there's a look at your forecast. Morning drizzle tomorrow, afternoon sunshine tomorrow, and then we'll be able to see a mild Christmas holiday. Not too bad. Not too bad. We'll I love all of the holiday cheer you throw into the graphics. Yeah, you oh, like yeah. the lights around the, the lights, the menorah, the dreidel, killing it. And even oh, the you pretense, haven't though. seen my elf on the shelf forecast yet, my friend. Is that coming up? I'll show that around eight to ten or okay. something like that. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Keep a Thank look you, out. Sarah. 646, 48 degrees out. And up next, have you seen Rise of Skywalker yet? Mm -hmm. I have, I have. <laughs> after more than 40 years, this era of Star Wars is coming to an end. We're going to hear from some of the actors after the break. Well, if you, what? this is why you get a puppy. The little, the little kisses, yes, oh, and sh oh, Kane can't get close enough to snuggle in there. You're going to meet this little guy coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Live time and Olivia's here. Oh my goodness! Yeah, all the right ingredients: the kisses on the chin, yes. the whimpers, and the little brow that's going, kind of getting furled up. Like, where's my home? Yes, this is Kane. He's a nine-week-old shepherd mix, and he just wants to be adopted. Look we, at how cute he we is. We can't get it close. And those little eyes with the eyebrows going up. I don't know if you can see that in his ears. He is the most adorable little thing. And he was just trying to nuzzle in. And if he was getting any closer, he'd be behind you. He was just, it was like, oh, let me get, let me get yes. in there. So nice short coat, probably easy to take care of. But with any puppy, you need lots of little toys to chew on. So Absolutely. That's, that's their little like stress reliever for him. So uh, what you got going on as we head in toward New Year's? Yes, as we head in towards New Year's, the Moore Children's Foundation has offered to do a 20,000 challenge match. So that means that you're your impact is doubled whenever you choose to give. I know end of year giving is coming up as we're just almost into 2020. So we ask that you would really think about donating to San Antonio Pets Alive and you can do so by going to SanAntonioPetsAlive.org slash donate. And that will automatically be doubled yes. by that organization up to 20 Yes, 000. and it ends on the 31st. Oh, wow. And, and of course, then you will get the tax write-off and everything like that. So that's fantastic. Yes. Great way to double your money. And every dollar that c comes into San Antonio Pets Alive goes directly to our programs and services to help save the lives of dogs just like Kane and cats as well. It goes towards our medical needs, so I'm towards intake, and just, you know, the daily care to take care of these sweet, sweet animals. And like she was talking about, it all stays right here locally. Mm -hmm. So, yes. well, if you'd like more information about that or little Kane with the eyebrows and the whimper, okay, new little kisses, just head on over to SanAntonioPetsAlive.org. Thank you, dear. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. So cute. No. So little. So my friend actually just got a dog, and she named it Chewy after Chewbacca. Oh, how appropriate for this next story. There you go. After more than <laughs> 40 years, a trio of trilogies, a few side movies, TV shows, books, and one of the biggest fandoms ever, Star Wars, is ending a chapter this weekend. And our Ivan Edetta has more from the director and stars of Rise of Skywalker. The feeling. The Force brought us together. The Force Awakens writer-director J.J. Abrams returns to wrap things up with Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Good people will fight if we lead them. When he kicked off the current trilogy, Abrams had questions. Will any of this remotely work? Will it float? Will 
these actors be able to carry the movie? Will these characters work together on screen? Will, 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 a million questions. When it came to concluding the Skywalker saga, he had different questions. What do you want to see? What must you see? What is demanding being seen? Which characters need to be there? How do you balance the scope and spectacle of these things that you realize you want to do with the intimacy and emotion? What are you doing there, 3PO? Taking one last look, sir. Meanwhile, Daisy Ridley's Rey still has questions of her own. She feels like she needs to find where she came from in order to move forward. But John Boyega's Finn has finally overcome his doubts about who he is. It's on his stuff, he wants to get stuff done, he's heroic, he fights for the resistance, no doubt about it, he would die for it. And it's just fun because I just actually get to just play a badass in this one. That's it. Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. So the question is, is the force with the movie? Here's a look <laughs> at how it's doing right now on RottenTomatoes.com. Critics say it's rotten. What? Whatever. 57%, <laughs> but don't worry. Fans seem to love it. 86% from the audience. You saw it. Yeah. So let's get the, the Stephanie Cerna movie review. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to hold back because I don't want to give it away. There's a lot of people in the audience and some of my coworkers who haven't seen it. I but haven't I, seen it yet. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, I took my, my six-year-old. I was a little hesitant because, you know, she's six, but I grew up watching, you know, one version of Star Wars mm -hmm. and I was like, I hope she appreciates it like I do. And, and she did. She actually sat through the movie and you know, she walked out feeling real powerful, <laughs> like, you know, girl power. She was making little poses and things. So, yeah, we loved it. Okay, so it when you cool. see the 57%, what yeah. was your immediate reaction? Uh, well, you know, I mean, yeah, it's Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> it's Star Wars. Well, we loved it. <laughs> All right, so it's a must-see. Yes. Time now, 6.54, 48 degrees up. We'll be right back. This SA Salute Holiday greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Major Scott Mueller. I work for Operation Inherit Resolve in sunny Kuwait. I'm here to wish a happy shout out and Merry Christmas to my sons and daughter in San Antonio, Texas, Chase, Kiara, and Augustus. Have a Merry Christmas and a happy holidays. We're on the city's south side off of I-37 South and Hotwells Boulevard and with a heavy police presence after an off-duty school officer was run over and killed this morning. We know he was a 27-year veteran with SAISD's police department and also the overnight security officer here at this IHOP. We're told a fight broke out inside the restaurant just before 345 this morning and later it spilled out into the parking lot where things only got worse. The SAISD officer was assaulted moments before police say Two suspects got into a gray sedan, intentionally ran the officer over, abandoned the car on the scene, and ran off. We know several people have been detained for questioning. Meanwhile, police continue their search for those two male suspects. And if you at home have any information, you're asked to immediately call SAPD. Reporting live on the city's south side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. After some drizzle and morning fog, we are going to be clearing. Temperatures will get up to 64 degrees today. Tomorrow's going to be pretty much a carbon copy of today, except it will be colder in the morning hours, 39. And then looking ahead to Christmas, we're going to get a steady warm up in the 70s for highs. Uh, not exactly a white Christmas. More like a sunny Christmas. It's okay. Can a, Christmas. A pleasant Christmas. A pleasant Christmas. I like that. We'll take it. <laughs> All right, well, we are taking an hour-long break for Good Morning America. When we come back, we have so much to tell you about. We're going to check in with Alicia. The latest on that officer-involved accident, uh, SAISD officer hit and killed this morning. Suspects still on the loose. We're going to check in. And also, have you seen the latest Star Wars? Well, some of us at GMSA, we have, and we're going to hear a review you from... You have. I have, <laughs> but not a review from me, from one of our producers and one of our photographers, big Star Wars awesome. fans. And, you know, a big travel weekend, so have a look at those airlines and the delays. Perfect. All right, Good. we'll see you back here in an hour. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA, an SAISD off-duty officer killed early this morning after trying to break up a fight. The latest from the scene on what happened and who was responsible. 
and a teenager remains in the hospital this morning after police say he jumped into the river in an attempt to run away from the law. And yes, our cameras are working. That's just what it looks like outside this morning. 46 degrees to start your Saturday morning. We are going to check in with Sarah Spivey on your full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. It is almost Christmas. It's Saturday morning. I hope you can get your shopping done with uh, the fog mm -hmm. in the air. Yeah. I had actually just heard of this expression, Panic Saturday. Have you heard of this before? <laughs> no, but I can Saturday. relate. So yeah. Sarah's calling it Super Saturday. Uh -huh. yeah. Panic Saturday is what I heard. Basically, if you forgot to get gifts, today is the day. you got to think positive. Super Saturday. <laughs> Panic Saturday is like, oh my gosh, i got to get those gifts. I actually have to admit there's one or two gifts that I still need to like, get. That's not bad. Yeah, I'd like to have it together. But uh, <laughs> the fog is out there this morning, reducing visibility to about a quarter of a mile in San Antonio at the moment. And it's nice and chilly in San Antonio. As you take a look at those current temperatures, it's 46 at San Antonio National Airport. Meanwhile, look up toward Bernie Stage Airfield, Kerrville. Temperatures are a lot colder in the 30s, and it's in the 50s down near Pleasanton and out uh, toward Stenson as well. So we do have that morning fog, uh, but we are eventually going to be able to see some sunshine. We'll see sunshine today. It'll be a very pleasant weekend. And in fact, I'll have your Christmas for forecast coming up, but I do want to show you the uh, the skies right now and how uh, the airports are doing any kind of airport delays. We just have that one big system in the Gulf of Mexico that's going to make it pretty uh, stormy for the southeastern quarter of the United States. So we'll be on the lookout for airport delays right now across the nation. No major delays to talk about and zooming in to local airports around the state of Texas. Again, everything is looking just fine at the moment. I'll be back with your sunshine forecast and your Christmas forecast in just a few. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Top stories we're following today. An off-duty SAISD police officer run over and killed this morning on the city's south side. Investigators are still in the 700 block of Hotwells Boulevard off of I-37 South. Now, police say the officer was run over intentionally, and this morning they are still on the search for those suspects involved. Alicia Barrera is live on the scene with the latest. Alicia, have police provided any description on who exactly they're looking for? Very minimal details, but yes, we know they're looking for two men and one of them was seen wearing a red hooded sweatshirt and black jeans and here still a very active scene. Here's what we know so far about what happened earlier this morning. The victim is an off duty SAISD police officer who worked as overnight security for this IHOP. We're told a fight broke out inside the restaurant. That was around 345 this morning. The officer then tried to break up the fight and was actually able to just for a little bit and get it, get those involved outside to the parking lot. But things unfortunately only got worse for that officer. The officer was assaulted and fell to the ground. Police say two suspects then got into a gray sedan, intentionally ran that officer over, abandoned the car on the scene, and then ran off. The officer was pronounced dead on the scene this morning. We, of course, have family assistance uh, notifying his family at this time. Uh, this is a very, very, very tragic situation. Uh, we do have individuals uh, detained. Uh, we know that two suspects took off from the location. Both appear to be Hispanic males in their mid to late 20s. Again, police do have description for at least one of those males, a red hooded sweatshirt and black jeans. And we know that police were able to take several people downtown for questioning, but no arrests have been made. All we know about the officer is that he's a 27 year veteran with SAISD's police department. And from what we've been able to see this morning, um, just right next to me, several SAISD police units. So um, his coworkers, his friends here to pay their respects and try to get a little bit more information. But again, police this morning still looking for those suspects involved. Reporting on the city's south side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Other top stories we're following this morning. A man recovering in the hospital after police say he crashed his vehicle into a pole. All of this happening in the 1400 block of Vance Jackson around 2.30 this morning. Now, police tell us the man was speeding on Vance Jackson, headed south when he lost control of his vehicle and slammed into an electric pole. Now, we're told emergency crews had to use the jaws of life to cut the driver out. Police say they do not believe alcohol was a factor in this crash. 
and a confrontation between three teenagers and police ended with one of those teens jumping into the river. All of this starting around 8.30 last night when officers responded to a call for an assault at a shop inside River Center Mall. Officers tell us there was a confrontation between two groups in the mall and one teen ran out of the mall and jumped about 30 feet into the river embankment. That teenager was taken to the hospital. Police arrested the other two teens in connection with the incident. They're facing charges of unlawfully carrying a weapon, assault and making terroristic threats. Well, the holidays are just a few days away, but happening today, the 27th annual Feast of Sharing Holiday Dinner. It's all part of HEB's ongoing initiative to fight hunger throughout Texas and Mexico. This year, they prepared holiday meals with all the fixings, including ham, sides like mashed potatoes and green beans, and of course, plenty of dessert. And the Feast of Sharing is open to anyone in need of a meal. It is happening at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center from 11 a.m. today until 3 p.m. and it's for all of those who need it. VIA is offering free rides to the feast. You just have to let the bus driver know where you're headed. This is it. Go Spurs, go. It is game day for the Silver and Black, and tonight we are going to see a familiar foe, the return of Kawhi Leonard and the LA Clippers. Oh, Kawhi. <laughs> <laughs> the Clippers are the second best team in the Western Conference, but in their last visit to the Alamo City back on November 29th, they actually lost to the Spurs. And tip-off for tonight's game is set for 7.30. It should be a good matchup. Coming off that really great win, the Spurs had a come-from-behind victory against the Brooklyn Nets, thanks to Patty Mills. So we'll see if they can uh, get a win streak going. Yeah. When they get it. Yeah. Go, go first, go. <laughs> 806, 46 degrees out. And it's a startling statistic. More than 200 current or former police officers took their own lives back in 2019. How the Baltimore Police Department is working to change that by breaking the stigma around mental health. That's coming up later this hour. Holidays just a couple days away, but a member of our KSAT news team drove hundreds of miles down to Mexico to spread some Christmas spirit. The story after the break. Yeah, we can't wait to share a story. That's our photographer, Ms. Ayal Gomez. And taking a look outside with live cam, as you can <laughs> see, we can't see much, but that wiper is going, trying to, to clear it for us. Uh, that's pretty much what it looks like right now, but we're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect for the rest of your weekend. If you're headed out, be safe. Yes, Drive smart. definitely. Well, Christmas is just a few days away, but thanks to the Oak Hills Spanish Church Project, Manos de Cristo, children in the community 300 miles away got to celebrate a little early. Now, Misael Gomez is a member of the church and a member of our KSAT team. He drove six and a half hours to hand deliver these presents, and he tells me it's something he looks forward to every year. There is toothbrush, toothpaste, socks. There is a toy for the child. Sometimes they'll throw in some school supplies and candy. This is the 15th year Miss Ayel Gomez has traveled all this way to be part of the group that brings 152 shoebox gifts to these children in need. This is Northwest Mexico. This is in Coahuila, the state of Coahuila, which borders with Chihuahua. We're right on the border with the Chihuahuan Desert, actually. So it's very, very dry, very arid country. There is a lot of danger still. There's a lot of poverty in this area. That means that the holiday season can be tough, but church members like Ms. Ayel, they arrived here to spread the Christmas spirit. The community, it was a very poor community. The kids are so positive. They're so excited. I mean, there was a lot of uh, yelling and screaming and excitement from the kids, and they were just thrilled to be getting a present. The hours of preparation, the drive, and the hundreds of miles now all worth it after handing these kids their presents. Smiling and ready to take the box home because a lot of times they don't want to open, open them there. They want to take them home because this is the only gift they'll have for Christmas. So they want to put it underneath the tree and have it for Christmas Day so that they can open it. That is just awesome. Oh. It's really cool to see Miss Ayel uh, get to tell his story yeah. on TV. We've, we've heard the story. Mm -hmm. you know, he's usually behind the, the camera. <laughs> yeah. right. so well, he's been doing it for 15 years. Yeah, and I'm incredible. just like, come talk to us. Tell us about it. It's a good thing you're doing. Way to yeah. go, Miss Ayel. Thanks for bringing us your story. We yes. appreciate it. Uh, it is interesting outside right now because the fog is literally lifting and you can see it. Wow. Look in the left hand side of the screen there uh, at the airport. You can see the fog just starting to literally lift.
it's evaporating and we're looking at beautiful blue skies behind it. And so very quickly here, we're going to be seeing total sunshine and fog will slowly lift from south to north. So there are still some areas around San Antonio that are experiencing fog. I'll show you that in a moment, but it's 45 degrees outside. We chilled down pretty quickly this this morning uh, with temperatures dropping off just uh, in the last uh, hour or so. But look out toward Bernie Stage Airfield. You can see visibility at zero there. So again, there are still some areas that are dealing with dense fog at the moment. That does include Hondo. And as I'm looking at some of these trans guide uh, videos, I can see that there is fog out there this morning as people are driving. So please use uh, some caution out there. Take a look at temperatures, a wide range here. It's much colder up in the hill country. Temperatures are in the 30s near freezing in Kerrville. They had completely clear skies in the overnight hours, and that's what allowed temperatures to cool down tonight. We're going to have clear skies and we can expect temperatures in San Antonio closer in the 30s, uh, but then we're dealing with the 50s elsewhere like at New Braunfels and down in Stinson. You can see that fog is starting to clear. We're looking at clearing skies around the area and all the light rain has moved on off to the south and to the east that we saw yesterday. Again, that clearing line is working its way southward and so we'll be able to see sunshine this afternoon. Take a look at the high res future cast. That's exactly what it shows by five o'clock. Tons of sunshine. We'll spend most of the morning here in the 50s, even still in the 50s around the lunch hour and then getting close to 60 degrees, 65 nearly in the afternoon. Sunny skies, a light northerly breeze at five miles per hour. And again, it will become cold quickly tonight. So don't forget that jacket. Here's your elf on the shelf forecast. A lot of people uh, enjoy uh, the elf on the shelf this time of year. If you are putting him out, just know that it's going to be cold. So give him a warm place to stay. Calming winds, chilly and clear. Temperatures will be in the 40s this evening. Let's take a look at Christmas, a sneak peek at Christmas Tuesday and Wednesday, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We're in for a bit of a warm up. Uh, today we will only be in the low to mid 60s by Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We'll be in the 70s for highs and we'll have comfortable weather, sunny skies. It'll be chilly Christmas Eve morning, but it'll be cool on Christmas morning. So keep that in mind. We're not going to have a white Christmas. In fact, on a regular given year, chance for a white Christmas in San Antonio about a goose egg. So don't expect anything in the way of snow, unfortunately for us. I know uh, Santa Claus, he's well versed in all different kinds of climates, so he'll be just fine. Keep in mind, we've got some more morning fog and drizzle tomorrow morning, and it is going to be chilly temperatures in the 30s for the start of the day tomorrow. We may have to deal with some frost up in the hill country, possibly even some very light freezing drizzle in the hill country early tomorrow morning, uh, but still it'll warm up really quickly in the day. I don't anticipate any problems on the roadways in the hill country with freezing drizzle. That's good news. A lot of people will be traveling right now. They will. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. I would just like to say the last few weekends, beautiful. Sunny, True. warm. Yes. We've been lucky. Fantastic. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Sarah, for the weather. 816, <laughs> 45 degrees out. And we tend to see an increase in porch pirates during the holidays, but when one California woman saw a pair of thieves in her neighborhood, she took matters into her own hands. How she was able to shame them into returning her package that's coming up in about 30 minutes. And it was a controversy that rattled Fox News a few years ago. A group of women facing hostility as they set out to expose CEO Roger Ailes for sexual harassment. Now, the true story is the basis for a new movie in theaters this weekend. After the break, what critics are saying about Bombshell. Hey, welcome back. It's 819, almost 820 at the box office this weekend. Controversy rattled for Fox News a few years ago, and a new Hollywood drama takes a look at how it affected the people who work there. Digital journalist Ivan Herrera has a preview of the movie Bombshell. A TV outfit needs tough, confident women. Do I push them? You bet your ass I do. But have I ever demanded sex during a casting session? I can avoid arbitration by suing Roger. Personally, we could call other women and show a pattern. Will other women come forward? Yes. Three women at Fox News face hostility as they set out to expose CEO Roger Ailes for sexual that. harassment in I'm Bombshell. If Roger finds out you came to us, he won't just fire you. He will attack you personally. Director Jay Roach and star Charlize Theron say the women who came forward were courageous. We talked to a lot of women, as many as we could, to 
feel what it, to sh somehow empathize and share the feeling with them of what it was like to, to be in this sort of toxic environment. It's like we're telling women, go on, speak up for yourself, just know the entire network is with Roger. Those are all things that I think any woman who's successful, who wants to be successful, or has drive and ambition can relate to. Margot Robbie says her character, Kayla, allows viewers to relate to the women's dilemma. I'm really grateful that I got to, that I got to get to know Kayla and that I got to let audiences experience what so many other women have experienced. This is a fight for your jobs. If I go, you go. Ready to go to war? Oh, yeah. Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. And Bombshell is rated R for sexual content and language. The film seems to be doing okay with critics, holding on to a score of 65% tomato meter. But this is where we see a little disagreement. Yeah, the critics, though, consensus reads, quote, Bombshell benefits from a terrific cast and a worthy subject, but its impact is muffled by a frustrating inability to go deeper than the sensationalistic surface, end quote. But fans seem to disagree. The movie has an audience score of 88%. Looks interesting, yeah. It's on the list, <laughs> I gotta go see it. 822, 45 degrees out. And it's a big decision for a lot of kids at Christmas what to put on their Santa letter. But Santa gets so many letters that he can't respond to them all. How local business is stepping up to help old St. Nick. 825 this Saturday morning. Writing letters to Santa is a Christmas tradition for so many families, but Unfortunately, Santa simply can't respond to every single letter he gets. Yeah, he's a busy man. And that's why a San Antonio business providing its services to help out old St. Nick. Gino's Deli has transformed into a mail delivery service for Santa's letters. The restaurant has a little red mailbox where both kids and adults can leave their letters for Santa Claus. So far, the owners of the restaurant have received 500 letters and they respond to every single one of them, each with a personalized message. I feel that I'm doing something constructive for the community, for the city and stuff, you know, and I feel fulfilled. And there's still time if your little one wants to mail their letter to Santa from Geno's. The last day is Monday. You can find more information on our website at KSET.com. That's awesome. Yeah. Helping Santa out. Yeah. My, my little girl handed him the letter. Mm, yeah. Smart. Which had pictures, more pictures than words, but... For now. <laughs> Time now is 826, 45 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, more than 200 current or former police officers took their lives, according to a report in 2019, how the Baltimore Police Department is working to back the blue by helping officers who may be struggling with mental health issues. And students at a local elementary school getting a chance to shop for their families for Christmas. We're going to tell you about the holiday shop where the students earn bear bucks for good attendance and good behavior. And the death toll in India increasing this morning following clashes between demonstrators and police. What they're protesting about coming up in your morning headlines. Good morning and happy Saturday. It is December 21st. Christmas is just a few days away. Yes, yeah, exciting. Thanks for joining us this morning. And maybe you're up early because you're going to do some shopping or super or visit family. Oh, yeah. Saturday? Either Panic Saturday or, super, or Saturday. super Saturday. We like to say. Super Saturday, right? Yeah, panic just makes me panic. Uh, let's take a look at visibility, though, because we are seeing areas of fog this morning if you're getting out to do that Christmas shopping or perhaps travel uh, across the state of Texas on the roads. There are some areas of fog, but it's starting to lift. Bernie Stage Airfield seeing dense fog, uh, limiting visibility to less than a quarter of a mile. But you look down towards San Antonio International Airport and visibility is improving. Out toward Hondo, pretty bad as well, uh, down to a quarter of a mile. So watch out for some of that fog. Uh, I know there is some fog at around the I-10 and Woodland area, so keep that in mind. All of this damp weather has really done some damage on the allergy count today. Mold is high, past 1,000. But I don't see any mountain cedars, so that's good news. But unfortunately, if you do suffer from a mold allergy, you're probably really feeling it today. And temperatures this morning, kind of all over the board. You go up into the higher elevations in the hill country, and we're waking up cold in the 30s. 34 in Bandera, 36 at Bernie Stage, 37 in Comfort. Here in San Antonio, kind of the middle of the road in the 40s right now. It's nice and chilly, 45 in San Antonio. Uh, it's 50 out 
in New Braunfels and 50 down in Stinson. Now with the fog dissipating, we are clearing and so temperatures will be able to warm up under sunshine, but it is going to be a cool day. We'll spend a good portion of the day in the 50s through about the lunch hour. Then we'll get into the 60s in the afternoon around 65 for the high north winds at five miles per hour and then tonight it gets cold. Temperatures really drop off getting into the 40s. So what about Christmas? Well, hope you don't like that movie White Christmas because it's not going to be a white Christmas for us. But I'll have a look at your Christmas forecast in just a few minutes and just how warm we'll be. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. We look forward to that. Right now it is 832 and an officer assaulted, run over and killed. That's a tragic incident homicide investigators are following this morning out of the city's south side. Police confirming the victim, an off-duty 27-year SAISD veteran officer working his second job as an overnight security guard. Alicia Barra live in the 700 block of Hotwells Boulevard where the scene is still clearly active. Yes, Max, good morning. Well, right now they've been out here for hours. This all started around 3.45 a.m. And right now, uh, medical examiner's office was here earlier, but um, they did transport that officer's body out in the ambulance. So right now um, they've just taken off that crime scene tape. But uh, let me tell you about what we know so far on this case. We know multiple witnesses were taken downtown for questioning. Unfortunately, those involved this morning did scatter. And after, after that happened, and at this hour police are still searching for two men. Here's what police have told us so far about those men that are considered to be suspects in this homicide case. Both appear to be Hispanic males in their mid to late 20s. Uh, one of the suspects was wearing a red hoodie with black jeans. Uh, we do ask anybody if they have any information on this incident to please contact our homicide unit at 207-7635. Again, that number to call for the homicide unit is 207-7635. Police say they received a call for a fight inside the restaurant around 345 this morning. And witnesses say the victim, who was working as overnight security at IHOP, broke up the fight and moved them outside to the parking lot. But that's where that officer was then assaulted, intentionally run over by those two suspects. And then we know that those suspects ran off. Police arrived to find that officer, unfortunately, on the ground underneath a gray sedan. And as of now, we have not seen that car involved taken off of the scene. Um, so we're still waiting on that. Again, the suspects ran off. And of course, the big piece of evidence that they did leave behind was that car. But coming up at nine, I do want to show you the emotional images of how that officer was on Honored this morning by his brothers and sisters reporting live on the city's south side. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Taking a look at your morning headlines. At least 17 people dead after clashes between demonstrators and police in India. All of this after a series of protests brought on by the new citizenship law. Public anger over the new law, which is considered to be discriminatory against Muslims, continues to build. All of this as the Indian government has banned public gatherings in certain cities, imposing Internet shutdowns. But the country's home ministry issuing a clarification saying that no Indian citizen should feel threatened by this new law. The search for a missing mother and her baby from Austin has come to a tragic end. Authorities confirmed the body they found in Houston is that of Heidi Rosard and that she was in fact murdered. Now police found her body in a house outside Houston. They also found her one month old daughter unharmed. One person has been arrested and charged in the case. Police believe the suspect was close friends with the woman. Investigators are trying to determine whether the kidnapping was in an attempt to take the woman's baby. With my signature today, you will witness the birth of the Space Force. It is the first new military service in more than 70 years. The Space Force is now officially the sixth branch of the United States Armed Forces. President Donald Trump signed the National Defense Authorization Act into law yesterday. He also appointed General Jay Raymond as the first chief of space operations. Raymond says that the Air Force will provide the bulk of support to Space Force and several Air, base, Air Force bases are likely to be renamed to reflect their importance to the Space Force's mission. And a startling statistic is stamping the end of the decade. According to a nonprofit group, more than 200 current or former police officers taking their own lives nationwide in 2019. In Baltimore, the police department is trying to do something about that. CNN's Whitney Wilde tells us how they're work working to back the blue. 
sliding into a cruiser, Baltimore Police Sergeant Richard Watts starts a new road. Showing up now for work every day is a daily reminder of how fortunate I really was. It's his second day back after a five month break taken in part to recover from alcoholism. I've been subjected to horrifying situations. I've been in a few car accidents, been shot at a couple times. I didn't deal with it. I used, um, I used alcohol as my way to detach. In 2018, stress from the job collided with heartbreak at home. Illness forced his wife onto life support. Then in October of that year, Sergeant Watts drove drunk and was arrested. And at that point in my life, everything was broken. Sergeant Watts turned to Vernon Heron. Just a reminder to you that there is help if you need it. Director Heron runs the BPD Officer Safety and Wellness Section, a program to identify and help officers who may be struggling. Since the program started roughly three years ago, more than 400 officers have reached out. The focus is simple, early intervention and overall health and wellness. Imagine these officers uh, who were alcoholics or these officers who involved in traumatic events and they never got the help and they're out there protecting the public. What could happen to them? The possible outcome is chilling. More than 200 current or former police officers took their own lives in 2019, up from 172 reported in 2018. That's according to Blue Help, a nonprofit group that tracks officer suicides. Baltimore Police Commissioner Michael Harrison sees more departments like his finally taking action. It's a changing dynamic, and yes, departments are spending more time on officer wellness because we are all talking about suicides and how officers find themselves having mental health issues. The reality is it could be anyone. Um, that, that's, the, that's the truth. Former BPD Deputy Commissioner Jason Johnson developed the idea for the program and now works with police around the country through the Law Enforcement Legal Defense Fund. We had this observation that there wasn't a lot of effort being put to helping the police officers there deal with the trauma. The kind of pain that gripped Sergeant Watts, who lost his wife in January. Though he's on a journey without her, Sergeant Watts knows he's far from alone. I've been given a second chance, and um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to take full advantage of that. In Baltimore, I'm Whitney Wild. And if you or someone you know needs help, you are asked to call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That number on your screen, 1-800-273-8255. Time now is 839, 45 degrees out. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you're going to love this story. A man in Missouri has been collecting merchandise and memorabilia for more than 40 years. Still ahead, how he was able to turn his collection into a successful business. <laughs> and the holiday season means a rise in package deliveries and a rise in porch pirates. But after the break, we're going to show you how a California woman was able to shame a pair of thieves into returning the gifts. Better watch out. She is a hero. <laughs> she is an American hero. Oh, my goodness. Your neighbors are watching, and so is Santa, so be good. It is 45 degrees. You can't see much out there with live cameras. We promise the cameras are working. That's just the conditions outside uh, see, right See, there you go. There hey, you they're go. trying to move a little bit. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. 843 this Saturday morning and we're coming back to a traffic alert for you this morning. San Antonio police tweeting out that eastbound loop 410 is shut down at Nacogdoches due to a tanker spill. If possible, try to avoid the area as best you can. Also try to find an alternative route if you're headed in that direction. Clearly we are seeing police on the scene, so they are trying to clean it up as soon as possible. If you are out and about this morning, maybe getting that holiday shopping done. Again, try your best to avoid the area. Looks like the lanes are still open, but slowing down obviously mm -hmm. because of that, that spill there. And tis the season for porch pirates. <laughs> Bad news, it becomes a growing problem, especially during the holiday season. But a pair of would-be thieves in one California neighborhood had no idea who they were messing with. Check out what the powerful voice of one woman does to these thieves. How funny, Shannon Brandon was eating breakfast with her son when they saw the porch pirates in action. She ran out of her house and started yelling at them to stop, eventually shaming them into putting the package back. Those people work hard and that was probably a Christmas present for their kids and you know, they, it, no, it's not right. 
Shannon's neighbor says she's very grateful for her actions. And in case you were wondering what was inside the package, it was a couple of pillows. Doesn't matter. Could have been anything. The point is, yeah, they could Shannon's be expensive. Yeah, they could be expensive pillows. They could be a nice present for one of their family it's members. True. Yeah. Porch pirates are horrible. That's bad. But I feel like if I was to be porch pirated, if people were to steal the packages that are coming to my house right now, mm -hmm. What they'd be getting is they'd be getting a lot of decorations mm. for wedding. <laughs> uh, they, they'd be getting a bunch of mason that's, jars. That's so. true. <laughs> they don't even know what they're stealing. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's just, it's ridiculous. So kudos to that woman. Although I would caution people to be careful when confronting things. Of course, yes. Not a great idea. Uh, right now outside, you can see off in the horizon there, the haze. We've had a bit of a foggy morning this morning, and there are still areas where the fog is pretty dense. But right now you can see that that's starting to lift and we're looking at sunshine. I do want to point out where uh, there is lowered visibility. You can see that visibility is pretty low around San Antonio. It's about five miles, but in some places it's been as low as a quarter of a mile, like out nor near Bernie stage. But things are starting to improve. The visibility, though, is still down to a quarter of a mile out in Hondo. So again, we are already starting to see the sunshine. And this is uh, what this morning's low temperatures look like. It's very cold up in the hill country, near freezing. It's 33 in Kerrville, 36 Comfort, 35 in Bandera, 37 in Tarpley, kind of middle of the road here in San Antonio where we're at 45. Meanwhile, it's 52 down in Pleasanton, 51 in Floresville, and 50 in New Braunfels. A wider view here, even colder uh, up in near Junction in Nizono where temperatures are below freezing. It's 37 in Del Rio, 55 in Corpus Christi, and 50 in Houston. We are seeing drier air filter on in from the southwest. This is that system. This big low pressure system is that system that brought us all of those damp conditions yesterday uh, where we saw a good amount of light rain, but then that drier air is filtering in. So that's why we were able to see the sun uh, as we are heading into uh, Saturday here. Uh, and it'll be really nice in the afternoon with temperatures warming up to 64. It'll be mostly sunny. North winds at about five miles per hour. Very comfortable today. Not too warm, not too uh, cold, kind of in that Goldilocks zone where you can just leave the windows open. And then tonight we're really going to cool off pretty quickly. Temperatures are going to fall pretty rapidly into the 40s. And by the start of the day tomorrow, we'll be in the upper 30s. And that's because we'll have clear skies. You can see that here on the future cast. Generally, everybody should be above freezing around San Antonio tomorrow morning. But up in the hill country, it's a bit of a different story. We are going to have areas of fog tomorrow morning. And so I do think we will have some frost for areas in the hill country where temperatures will be close to or just barely below freezing as this model is showing, this forecast model. I'll also keep my eye open for some freezing drizzle. But what I don't expect in the hill country is any major problems on the roadways. We're going to warm up into a mild Christmas week. Christmas Eve is Tuesday. Christmas Day is Wednesday. Temperatures on those days should be able to warm up into the low 70s. So it is going to be pretty warm, a lot like last year. Now this weekend is a big travel weekend, especially uh, for uh, areas in the in the airs airways. So we're really going to have to watch out for airport delays across the southwestern tier of the United States because there is going to be some heavy rain both today and tomorrow in that area. We'll keep an eye on airport delays. As far as I know, last check, everything is pretty good right now. Uh, and don't forget morning fog and drizzle tomorrow morning and then a mild week ahead. All right. Something to watch out for tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 848, 45 degrees out. And finding the perfect Christmas gift can be pretty difficult. Oh, yes, it can. Some <laughs> ideas for any last-minute gifts you may have. That's coming up after the break. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, I'm Master Sergeant Amanda Torres, stationed in Afghanistan. I just want to wish my family and friends in San Antonio, Texas, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. I love you, and I'll see you all soon. 8.52 this Saturday morning and the gift giving season is in full swing from secret Santa exchanges at the office to gifts for your child's teacher. Finding the right gift can leave a lot of us still scratching our heads. Yes, every year. In this morning's Angie's List Report, GMSA producer Jared Hoeing has some ideas for you. You've made your list and checked it twice, but sometimes it can be tough to find that perfect gift. One easy option is a gift card. 
especially if it takes an undesirable task off the recipient's shoulders. My favorite gift certificate idea for the dog lover is a pooper scooper. Who wouldn't love to have someone come out and clean up after their dog? If that's not quite right, you might want to consider a dog walker or a grooming gift certificate. If you're looking into pooper scoopers, ask if they're insured and bonded. Next up, there are lots of options for the car lover in your life. For the car guru, whether you're a commuter or the carpooling parent, a car detail can be a great gift certificate. And a lot of services offer a mobile detailing these days, so it can be super convenient too. If you go with this option, knowing the size of the recipient's vehicle is important because costs can vary. And if you're looking for something for someone who owns a home, Here's one idea. For the homeowner, window washing can be a great gift certificate idea. It's a task that oftentimes we homeowners put off way too long, and to have nice sparkling clean windows can really brighten your home. If the gift recipient lives in an apartment, a certificate for a house cleaning service might be a better option. Before purchasing your gift certificate, be sure to read reviews to find a great company. Also, ask questions because you don't want to be surprised later on to find that your gift recipient has an extra charge. You want to make sure you get the right size gift certificate. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Jared Hoeing. I never thought of that. Those Car are, detailing. Yeah, those are good good ideas. Genius. Good ideas. You already brought the presents today. You brought yeah, tacos. Yeah. Stephanie woke up super early, waited until <laughs> Taco Cabana <laughs> opened, and then well, brought everyone at the station tacos. Well. Christmas oh. has come early. Yeah. Well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. 854, 46 degrees out. And the force is strong with a man in Missouri after the break, how he was able to turn his massive Star Wars collection into a store. And welcome back. It is 856. So if you can't get enough of Star Wars, check this out. A small town in Missouri, home to a very unique Star Wars store. Sean McConnell is a huge Star Wars fan. He's been collecting merchandise and memorabilia for 40 years, but he's been collecting it in his basement. So now he turned it into a store in Blue Springs that's right outside Kansas City. And from Han Solo and Carbonite to R2-D2, the store filled with thousands and thousands of Star Wars items and business is booming, especially right now with the release of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, I like that yeah, photo. <laughs> Is that right. Mark Hamill's signature? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, well, and Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker, mm -hmm. so cool to see him. Fantastic. Good luck, Sean. Yeah. Time now, 857, 46 degrees out. And for a lot of people, the holidays mean big holiday meals. Yes. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> but those meals don't have to be unhealthy. We have some easy and tasty substitutes to keep your holidays on the healthy side. Right now, a story we've been tracking all morning, an off-duty SAISD police officer killed after trying to break up a fight on the south side early this morning. Our Alicia Barrett live on the scene with what police know now. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, looks like things have cleared up a little bit since earlier. If you were with us earlier, couldn't see anything. Now there you go. We're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit. Good morning. It is 9 o'clock on Saturday, December 21st. And when we first got here, there were yeah. patches of fog. You couldn't see anything out of the live cam. Yes, looked scary on the roadway. Looked roadways. scary. Yes. Driving conditions, mm -hmm. not ideal. But we just took a look outside. The fog's lifted? The fog is lifted. You know what's so funny? It just occurred to me. Remember that the Christmas song, Then One Foggy Christmas Eve? Santa, he won't need Rudolph. <laughs> But we'll take them. Yeah. Okay? Because we are starting to see that fog start to lift. And you can see that here. Uh, visibility has totally improved around San Antonio proper. There are some areas out toward Hondo and even New, New Braunfels dealing with uh, lowered visibility. But all of that damp weather is starting to clear out. Unfortunately, though, we're left with a high mold count because of yesterday's light rain and this morning's foggy and drizzly conditions. So keep that in mind if you do have a mold allergy. Uh, it is bad today out there. Let's take a look at temperatures locally. You know, it's nice and cold up in the hill country. Close to freezing, but just above it. 36 in Kerrville, 36 in Comfort, 36 in Bandera. Uh, and locally around San Antonio, we're now at 46 degrees. You go down toward Floridsville, Pleasanton, temperatures are in the 50s. We'll be able to see these temperatures rebound pretty nicely here because we're clearing. Lots of sunshine. We are still going to have a wind from the north at about 5 miles per hour. And you know what? It's not going to be warm. It's not going to be cold. It's just going to be right in the middle. Uh, and we'll see temperatures climb to near 65 in the 
the afternoon. It will, however, get chilly this evening as temperatures fall off into the 40s. Let's go ahead and take a look in just a few minutes on uh, airport delays and We'll, we'll take a check and see how uh, the airlines are doing right now. My guess is that it's OK, but it is one of the busiest traveling days of the year. And we do have a storm working its way through the southeastern portion of the United States. I'll be back with a look at that and your Christmas forecast in just a few. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning. This morning on the city south side, an off-duty school officer killed while protecting the peace. Police were called to the 700 block of Hotwells Boulevard for reports of a fight. But when they got there, they found the officer on the ground and unresponsive. Our Alicia Beretta has been at the scene of this tragic case all morning. Now, Alicia, you've seen how tough this has been for officers there, but we understand you have also witnessed them doing something special for the fallen off-duty SAISD officer. Yeah, they have found strength this morning on such a tragic day. And let me start off with saying we just got a press release, uh, press release from San Antonio ISD. And this they have confirmed the name of the officer killed this morning. It's Detective Cliff Martinez, a 28 year veteran with SAISD's police department. And what we saw this morning, very emotional. His brothers and sisters in uniform arriving here um, as early as four o'clock this morning to show up and pay their respects and of course a lot of questions and they waited for hours until the medical examiner's office arrived on scene but later along with SAPD they escorted detective Cliff Martinez off the scene he was then placed in the ambulance and it was just so emotional um, we saw some bystanders make the sign of the cross and respect others other officers crying in their patrol units and of course bystanders stopping to allow officers this moment we know the fallen officer again served with San Antonio I ISD's police department for 28 years, but he was working overnight as IHOP's overnight security officer. This all happened around 345 this morning when a fight broke out inside and the officer tried to break it up. He was able to get those involved out into the parking lot, but that's where he was assaulted and then run over with a gray sedan. Uh, we do have individuals uh, detained. Uh, we know that two suspects took off from the location. Both appear to be Hispanic males in their mid to late 20s. Uh, one of the suspects was wearing a red hoodie with black jeans. Again, those individuals detained were simply taken downtown for questioning, but as of now, no arrests have been made. As you can see behind me, the scene is now clear. Uh, employees are able to go back in, inside IHOP. It's unclear if they'll be open for business, but the latest information again we have is that his name is confirmed. Detective Cliff Martinez, a 28 year veteran with SAISD's police department. Reporting live from the city's south side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, Alicia, our thoughts go out to his family this morning. And also new this morning, a man in stable condition after he lost control of his vehicle and drove into an electrical pole. It happened just before 2.30 this morning in the 14,000 block of Vance Jackson. That's on the city's north side. According to police, the man was driving southbound on Vance Jackson at a high rate of speed. That's when he hit that electrical pole and he had to be cut out of his vehicle. And a traffic alert to tell you about happening right now. San Antonio police tweeting out that the eastbound loop 410 is shut down in Nacogdoches because of an oil or because of a tanker spill. Now they are asking any people out and about this morning to find an alternative route if you're headed in that area. Again, it looks like we have authorities on the scene and they are working to clean it up as quickly and as efficiently as possible. But again, if you are out and about this morning, try and avoid the area. In your national headlines, more protests breaking out across India in response to the controversial Citizenship Amendment Act. Now, people protesting their anger over the new law, which is considered to be discriminatory against Muslims. The Indian government has imposed the Internet shutdown and has banned public gatherings in certain cities. The death toll is now at 18. And President Donald Trump signing the spending package that includes several new policies, one of which changes the age that you can buy tobacco from 18 to 21 years old. President Donald Trump signing the bill into law yesterday. It prohibited the sale of tobacco products to anyone under the age of 21. As of this month, 19 states have already raised the minimum age to buy tobacco products from 18 to 21. 
And topping your health headlines, 11% of people in Texas have diabetes. That's according to the latest numbers from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. For a lot of people, the holidays mean big holiday meals, but those meals, they don't have to be unhealthy. Now, I brought in a doctor from UT Health to show us some fast, easy, and tasty substitutes to keep your holidays on the healthy side. There's a lot of obesity. There's a lot of patients that are actually getting diagnosed with high blood pressure at an earlier age. It wasn't like that. It's all because of your choices. And your choices can be easily made this holiday season. So let's start with the drinks. A lot of people love their liquid calories. But like, for example, this looks really nice. You think it's a healthy wine, but it's actually sweet red if you look in the back. So it has a lot more. Oh, it actually even tells you it has 17 grams of carbohydrates, and that's just for five ounces. So instead of doing uh, picking this, you can just pick regular red wine, the dry version. Next up, we have chips, obviously. Kids love chips. Who doesn't love chips? You can use carrots instead. And if you trick the kids by adding hummus, having like avocado ranch, it really is a great alternative. And really, it's much healthier for everyone in the family. And it's something that they should just adapt on a regular basis. So when you have the actual meals, there are healthy substitutes that you might not even notice. Boil the cauliflower and then mash it up and add the same ingredients that you would for your mashed potatoes. And it tastes so good. You really can trick the kids. Veggies are so key, especially for the kids. If you could just squeeze in a little bit of vegetables during your meal, like with the cauliflower mash, if you add some cheese, they probably won't tell the difference. So really just squeezing in some things, it's going to make a difference because of how much diabetes we're also seeing in the kids. And lastly, dessert, my personal weakness. You can pick fat-free condensed milk, fat-free cream cheese, and this is basically plus the eggs, you make your cheesecake. And you've already cut like a lot of carbohydrates. And when you're shopping, just be mindful of the nutrition labels and what it has. Be careful with the hidden calories, okay, and the hidden ingredients as well. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. You don't want to start the year off with being diagnosed with diabetes. All right, time to talk sports and time to talk the Spurs. They are taking the LA Clippers tonight. LA Clippers coming to the Alamo City, a familiar foe. Kawhi, Kawhi. Leonard. Kawhi. <laughs> Kawhi is back. Coming here with the Clippers. Tip-off is set for 7.30. And again, this is coming off of a big win. Spurs had a come-from-behind victory yeah. thanks to Patty Mills. Pretty much carrying the offensive load on his back, and he was ready to go. 27 points against the Nets, so hopefully they can do it again tonight. Yes. Although the Clippers, pretty good. I think they're number two in the West right now. Yeah, they're good, but, you know, we love our Spurs. Spurs, go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Not Kawhi. 909, 46 degrees out. And most of us deal with the issue of random random numbers blowing up our phones and leaving us voicemails about late payments and warrants out for our arrest. But they're all fake and scams. How the local government plans on stopping these calls, that's still ahead. I'd say in the last week, I have had about 20. That's a lot. Ooh. Yeah, I get a, at least a, one a day. At least one. Time. Oh, that's... Not very pretty. That's interesting. We're going to have what you can expect <laughs> for the rest of your weekend in just a couple minutes. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. Good morning and welcome back. 9.13 this Saturday morning and we are seeing some fog and then seeing some not fog. Yes. Seeing some not fog. Well, because we see some shots <laughs> and it's like, it's yeah. beautiful yeah. out there. So what, what it is, is fog is starting to lift in many places around uh, San Antonio, but there's still that low level cloud cover in some places mm -hmm. and so the tower camera is above that low level, level cloud cover, so it's, you're pretty much looking in, in a cloud. And you showed us a live picture earlier where it was actually lifting. Lifting up, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I thought today we could talk a little weather 101. A lot of Ooh. people uh -oh. have been asking me, will we have a white Christmas, <laughs> Sarah? Will we? No, we won't. No. <laughs> we won't have a white Christmas. In fact, we've never had a white Christmas in San Antonio since records have been taken in the 1890s. Wow. So the chance is pretty zero, much mm -hmm. zero. But if you've been a Texan for a while and a South Texan for a while, you may remember the white Christmas of 2004 for South Texas. Let's go ahead and bring that up and see if we can pull up those graphics there. All right. Well, we're going to keep on talking because it's hard no to graphics. get the weather. I know. I'm, I'm cheating. Right I'm now. cheating. I'm trying to look at the graphics back it's, here. It's hard <laughs> to talk weather without the graphics, but we'll try anyway. There we go. Okay. Hey, there's our weather graphics. So this was the 2004 white Christmas of South Texas. Notice that in San Antonio, there was no snow whatsoever. So 
Let's go ahead and take uh, a look at Galveston. It saw about four inches of snow. Victoria, about more than a foot and a half of snow. Corpus Christi, a four and a half inches and a dusting down near Brownsville. So that's where you see that. So this was in 2004 and we missed out here in San Antonio, unfortunately. And our Christmas sneak peek looks a little like this this year. Temperatures starting off chilly in the 40s and then warming up to the 70s in the afternoons. Uh, and we'll have really comfortable weather too. It's not going to be too humid or anything like that. Speaking of Christmas, let's talk about airport delays across the uh, nation. A big travel day here this Super Saturday. There is one system in the Gulf of Mexico that's going to be bringing heavy rain for the southeastern tier of the United States, but it's all good news right now at least. No delays at the major airports uh, around the nation and even around Texas, you know, all the local airports are OK as well uh, from uh, Austin down to Bush International and the Corpus Christi, even up toward Dallas, uh, Fort Worth and Love Field. Here's a look outside right now. You can see that fog starting to lift uh, and we do have visibility down to eight miles in San Antonio, but generally we're starting to see that sunshine through. It's 46 degrees. We've got a wind from the north northwest at about 10 miles per hour. It's 46 at JBSA Randolph, 49 in New Braunfels, 38 up in Comfort, 36 in Kerrville, so a lot colder up in the hill country. Uh, and you can see on the satellite image that that fog is starting to lift and we're starting to see the sunshine. The rain shield left over from yesterday is uh, south of Corpus Christi and it's starting to be sunny in the hill country. So very shortly here we'll be able to see a very sunny and pleasant day with temperatures climbing pretty nicely. We'll stay in the 50s though during this first part of the day and then in the 60s in the afternoon around 64 for the high north winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour at times, and then we get pretty cold this evening. So if you and your family do Elf on the Shelf this evening, make sure that Elf has a warm place to stay because this evening temperatures are going to fall quickly. We'll be in the 40s. You'll need that jacket too if you're going out this evening, so keep that in mind, maybe even a scarf as well. Taking a look at the seven day forecast, I want to show you that tomorrow there are going to be areas of morning fog and drizzle and we'll be cold. We'll be near 39 degrees. Then in the afternoon tomorrow, nice and sunny as well. Pretty much a carbon copy of the forecast today. Uh, and then as we head into the week, temperatures will warm up nicely. There's Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and into the end of the week. Small chance for rain on Friday, uh, but right now that's our only chance for rain over the next seven days. If you're wanting to wash your car this weekend, maybe make it nice and fresh for the in-laws coming in town, yeah. I would suggest <laughs> that you do that after tomorrow morning because we'll have morning fog tomorrow morning mm -hmm. uh, and drizzle in the areas, and so that'll make the car a little messy on the outside. But gotcha. yeah, get it done tomorrow or Monday. Good advice. As long as it's before the in-laws come in. <laughs> yeah, and before Christmas when, before Christmas, when most right. of our in-laws come in. That's so. true. Yeah. Good, good advice, Sarah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Sarah. 917, 46 degrees out. And it's a problem most people can probably say they deal with all the time. Scam, phone calls, how the local government is trying to handle this problem. That's still ahead. Good morning and welcome back. 921 this Saturday morning and it is a problem that's been happening for quite some time now. It seems someone is trying to make their own Christmas wishes come true at the expense of other people. Two different local government entities have put out warnings this week about a recent uptick in what they call phone scams. As Katrina Weber reports, the callers have one goal in mind to get their hands on your money. This office is all dressed up for the holidays. Still, there's something afoot that is putting a damper on the holiday spirit here. They're threatening, they're frightening, uh, and they're really scaring our residents. Bear County spokeswoman Monica Ramos says telephone predators lately have been targeting people all over town. Jurdenton police have put out a warning too. The criminal callers pretend to represent various government offices and agencies, telling people they face jail time for owed money. For non-existent fines or for um, warrants out for their arrest, things of that nature, mystery duty. Romo says none of it is true. But that doesn't mean people won't believe it. Although we often hear about schemes that target the elderly, Ramos says in this case the victims are across the board. People of all ages are getting these calls. It is an absolute scam. County offices will never call residents and ask uh, for payment over the phone. But that's exactly what the callers do, demand money over the phone. 
Ramos says they order the victims to go out and buy prepaid gift cards, then call them back and give them the card numbers and PIN numbers. Instead, she says anyone who receives the call should hang up and call the county instead at 210-335-2011. That way they can verify if there even is a problem, and if so, handle it the right way. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. I think it's really important to mention, especially with the holiday season. Yes, and then you have that number there. And then I have that number, 335-2011. Yeah. yeah, good advice. All right, 923, 46 degrees out. And cats in theaters now, and critics are not showing any mercy with the ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. We have a full preview of the movie still ahead on GMSA. Good morning and welcome back. 926 this Saturday morning. Three NFL games scheduled for today, but tomorrow it is do or die day for the Cowboys. Taking on the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. Both teams sitting at 7-7. Seven and seven. Huge playoff implications. So you win and you're in. It's as simple as that. <laughs> A lot of people will be watching, especially here. A lot of people Here. will be watching. Yeah, our co-workers will be glued to the TV. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, time now is 927, 45 degrees out. And next on GMSA, Netflix losing subscribers to the new streaming service, Disney+. Plus. How many it's expected to lose in the next year? That's still ahead. And after the break, we are going to take a look back on memory lane to some of the biggest stories of the last 10 years. Also ahead on GMSA, Ford Motor Company has recalled more than 600,000 cars due to a hydraulic defect. How to know if your car is part of that massive recall. Good morning and welcome back. It is Saturday, December 21st. We are in full swing for the holidays. Yes, thanks for joining us this morning. It is 45 degrees for now, but yeah, Sarah says it's going to warm up a little bit. Yeah, it'll be nice and cool today, guys. We're not going to be cold by any means, but again, nice and cool. Let's take a look at current temperatures out there. The fog we had this morning is really starting to dissipate. It's 45 at San Antonio International Airport. It's 39, though, up in Bernie Stage Airfield, and it's 38 out in Kerrville, so much colder up in the Hill Country. Meanwhile, it's near 51 degrees down in Pleasanton. Uh, as for the weather today, we will be able to have sunshine, which is a nice change from yesterday's drizzable condition. A very pleasant weekend in store for us. Uh, and then, of course, I'll have a look toward Christmas. It does look like it's going to be a little bit on the warmer side. But for now, let's go ahead and check in with the pollen count. Mold is actually high today because of all of the rain uh, and damp conditions we saw yesterday. So if you're wheezing in season, mold's the reason. I'll be back with a look at your Christmas forecast in just a few. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, an officer assaulted, run over, and then killed. That's a tragic incident homicide investigators are now looking into on the city's south side. Police have confirmed the victim was Detective Cliff Martinez, an off-duty 28-year SASD veteran officer who was working at his second job overnight as a security guard when he was killed this morning. Alicia Barrett, live in the 700 block of Hot Wells Boulevard, and you have the latest. Good morning. Well, this all unfolded around 3.45 this morning when a fight broke out inside the IHOP and tragically ended minutes after outside here in the parking lot of this IHOP. And the scene has now been cleared, but the investigation to track down those suspects involved is barely starting this morning. So right now, as you can see, clear. Um, SAPD says off-duty Detective Cliff Martinez tried to break up a fight inside and managed to get those involved out to the parking lot. We're told a good Samaritan also helped the detective defuse the situation, but unfortunately, things only got worse outside. Detective Martinez was assaulted and fell to the ground. Then two suspects in a gray sedan are said to have intentionally ran him over before running off on foot. Detective Martinez was unfortunately pronounced dead on the scene this morning. Both appear to be Hispanic males in their mid to late 20s. Uh, one of the suspects was wearing a red hoodie with black jeans. We do ask anybody if they have any information on this incident to please contact our homicide unit at 207-7635.
The number to write down is 207-7635 for PD's homicide unit. And here's what the district, San Antonio ISD, has shared following the death of Detective Cliff Martinez. It reads, he was a highly respected member of the SAISD Police Department who worked for the department for 28 years. He will be greatly missed. Our thoughts are with his family and friends during this difficult time. Um, and an emotional piece that we saw this morning was his brothers and sisters in uniform lining up here on Hotwells Boulevard and escorting him out. Um, tough morning for them. What we saw, some I mentioned earlier making the sign of the cross, bystanders stopping to pay their respects, and some officers crying in their patrol units because, of course, this is just a difficult situation. They have a lot of questions. So right now, police, what they're looking for are those two suspects, two males, still on the run this morning. Reporting live on the city's south side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lisa. In your consumer headlines, Ford Motor Company recalling more than 600,000 vehicles to fix a hydraulic defect that could lead to crashes. Now, the company says the Ford Fusion, Mercury Milan, and Lincoln MKZ are vehicles made between February 2006 and July 2009. They're all being recalled for this exact issue. The automaker has identified at least 15 accidents that have happened because of this defect, causing at least two separate injuries. Ford says that its dealers will inspect the vehicle's hydraulic control units for signs of malfunction valves and will replace the units if necessary. And Netflix lost nearly 1 million subscribers to the newest streaming service, Disney Plus. Only weeks into its launch, a poll finds a Disney Plus grabbed 24 million subscribers. Wall Street predicted more than 20 million by the end of this year. Now, data shows nearly 6% of Netflix users canceled to make the switch. One Wall Street analyst believes with current pricing, Netflix will lose 4 million subscriptions next year. And right now on KSAT.com, we are taking a look back on the top stories that have happened locally and nationally over the last 10 years. Just to name a few, back in 2012, Texas 130 toll road was completed and has the fastest speed limit in the country. Also in 2012, Johnny Manziel, Kerrville, won the Heisman. In 2014, Becky Hammond was hired as an assistant coach for the Spurs and four tornadoes touched down in the city in 2017. We have a full list of all of the stories that Peaked your interest in the last 10 years on our website right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And some more stories there. Zebras, hogs, and sharks all made headlines in Texas this year. In August, an 11-foot, 7-inch male tiger shark was caught off the beach in Corpus Christi. And Texas Shark Rodeo named it the Catch of the Week. And back in September, a 411-pound feral boar was caught near Gateway Hills Golf Course by members of Lone Star Trapping. For a full list of both of these stories, you can go to our website at KSAT.com. I remember that one. Oh, <laughs> really? I remember seeing it. I was like, that is a big pig. Yeah, that, yeah. That, I, was, I was trying to think. I, don't, I didn't remember this one. I remember doing a story here locally. Uh, and it was only, only, like over 200 pounds. Oh, that's it. It was found like in a park. They, it was, its name was Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's cute because it was 200 pounds, not 400 pounds, right? Right? I'm trying to think, what would you name Buttercup if they gained another 200 pounds? I don't know. Margin cup? <laughs> hey, that's mean. <laughs> All right, 937. Don't shame the pig. I'm to crease out. Oh my goodness. Still ahead, there are a lot of pets available to adopt if you're looking to add a forever furry friend to your family. Max. <laughs> furry friend, not a 400 pound pig. And a fifth grade a fifth grade students at Briscoe Elementary giving students the chance to shop for their families this Christmas. How they say their teachers are help impacting the kids still ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Can't see much from this camera, but <laughs> <laughs> some other cameras you will be able to see. But we're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect for the rest of the week. And real quick, here's a look at some birthdays. Happy birthday to Christian, nine years old. Happy birthday, Christian. And we have next up, Benjamin, four years old. Happy birthday, Benjamin. Turned four yesterday. Remember to keep sending in your birthday pictures to ksat.com. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on Good Morning San Antonio. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Atlas Floors. From all of us at Atlas Floors Carpet One, we'd like to offer a heartfelt thank you to all who have served or are serving in our military. We'd like to wish you and your family happy holidays. Happy holidays. 
Good morning and welcome back. 941 this Saturday. Now, hundreds of students at Briscoe Elementary, they are getting a chance to shop for their families this Christmas thanks to a fifth grade teacher and her holiday Christmas store. And the store, all made possible by generous donations, has been serving students for 10 years now. I had the chance to visit the holiday store, and it doesn't just help students put something under the tree for the family, it also teaches them a valuable lesson. Those are your bear bucks? Yeah. Our bills are 20s, 5s, 1s, and 50s. Fifth grade student Ileana Jimenez shows us some of the bear bucks she has earned at school this year. She says she's been saving up to buy her mother, father, and sister something for Christmas. So it gives us that choice, like, do we want to spend it or do we want to keep saving it for something bigger? Students like Ileana can shop at the school's holiday Christmas store. Fifth grade teacher Renee Ortiz said she initially started the shop 10 years ago as a way for students to pick out a little something for themselves. But she said it quickly became a way the students could shop for their families. Parents last year and the years before have actually told me that they really appreciate this project because in some cases, it's the only gifts they have under the tree. And Renee has taken it a step further. Her students not only earn bare bucks throughout the school year for good behavior, attendance, and jobs around the classroom, but they also have their own checking accounts. They also pay rent in the classroom. They pay rent for their desk, which is a mere $5 a week, but they learn the responsibilities of saving up their money. One of Eliana's jobs in the classroom is being a bank teller for her classmates. If um, we do something wrong, it can mess up like a person's whole bank account and the amount of money they have. The donations for gifts have more than doubled over the years and they have been able to open the shop to more students. They know it's not about them, it's about their families. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Okay, so I always was wondering why do they teach us like this detailed, intense physics classes and stuff? Mm -hmm. It's important. Physics is I was important. Going to say, yes. the scientist scientists. in the room. For, I'm a scientist for careers. Some but careers. I mean, like, yeah. there's some there's mm -hmm. some classes that are a little too like the the advanced math is not necessarily what somebody wants to do with their life. But this, but why don't they yeah. teach us like? how to balance a checkbook or stuff like that. So that's really cool. It and by the way, it's very cool. I'm a huge physics nerd and it paid off in my career. Well, yes. But I'm saying for others who, who maybe they just want to learn those life skills. Right. I or think different that's career a path. great opportunity. That is amazing. It's really cool. And just to be clear, that's the fifth grade class. Okay, so the, cool. the, the holiday shop is open to the whole school, which includes the little ones. Right. They do it a little differently. They, you know, they help them with the bare bucks, but they don't have a checking account. That's uh, fifth grade, but very cool. Very, very cool that they have their own checking accounts. Some of the kids, like Ileana, they serve as bank tellers for their classmates. So yeah, yeah and they very have to great pay idea. rent, but it's, it's a good <laughs> idea. Like you got to set aside some money. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. Cool, neat. Now let's talk science. Yes. There we now go. Let's talk waiting for it. Let's talk about the forecast. I first want to show you outside right now, and we have got a little bit of foggy yeah, clouds still out there, uh, but generally visibility is improving. Still pretty low down at Stinson, where it's at a quarter of a mile, but you can see that haze in that on the horizon there. That's that low-level haze that's really starting to lift, and we'll be seeing tons of sunshine here shortly. You can see on the visible satellite, again, just some low-level clouds on the southeastern side of Bear County. It is totally sunny, though, uh, out in the hill country. Uh, and it was clear overnight, and that's why temperatures have fallen into the upper 30s, low 40s out there. 40 in Kerrville, 39 at Bernie Stage, 45 here in San Antonio, 50 in Floresville, 51 in Pleasanton. And we're going to be able to warm up here pretty quickly with uh, these beautiful blue skies and drier air filtering in. Here's our big upper level low pressure system that brought us all that rain yesterday. Uh, but behind it, we're getting some drier air filtered in from the southwest. So that's why we're going to have sunny skies today and sunny skies tomorrow. Uh, we're starting off with areas of fog and drizzle. 64 though for the high today, so it's going to be nice and comfortable and we'll have winds from the north at five miles per hour, generally cooling very quickly this evening. Temperatures in the 60s this afternoon going to cool down into the 40s in the overnight hours. We'll wake up in the upper 30s tomorrow morning around Bear County. It is possible to see a light freeze up toward Bernie and Leon Springs area in the northwestern tier of the county, but around downtown things should stay above freezing, but still pretty cold. 
cold. Uh, again, dropping down into the 30s. The exception to that is going to be the hill country, where I do think there are going to be areas that are dropped down to freezing. We're going to have more fog tomorrow morning. We may end up with some frost up in the hill country, and we may end up with a little bit of freezing fog up in the hill country. What the heck is freezing fog? Freezing fog just may produce a little light glazing of ice on elevated surfaces like your vehicle or like the little grass blades on your lawn. That's frost. So keep in mind that that could be a possibility. I'm not expecting anything in the way of uh, dangerous conditions on the roadways, but I do think that tomorrow morning there could be a little bit of uh, frost in the hill country. Then we're going to warm up as we head into Christmas week. It's going to be pretty mild with temperatures in the 70s on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, uh, so it's going to feel pretty warm outside. And for those of you who are traveling this weekend, especially uh, via airplane, just be on the lookout for airport delays because there is going to be a big system that drops some heavy rain across the southeastern tier of the United States. And of course, we all know that Atlanta Airport is a big hub uh, around the nation, so we'll keep that in mind and we'll keep you updated on airport delays uh, as we head into Christmas week. Again, some morning fog tomorrow morning in San Antonio will be in the upper 30s and to start the day then we'll be able to warm up to about 65 in the afternoon so pretty mild today and tomorrow and then we'll warm up through Christmas Day that's good if the kids get like a bike or some outdoor oh, type yeah, they can toy. instantly go and try it out yeah mm -hmm. good news thank you yeah. Sarah we have the elf on the shelf forecast <laughs> we have the beautiful menorah we got the yes. dreidel we got the Christmas, Christmas lights, lights. Yeah. all out Oh, happy Hanukkah, by the way. Oh, yeah. It's coming. Yeah. All right. 948, 45 degrees out. And the movie Cats, now in theaters. Oh, my gosh. I saw this, guys. Just wait. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I can't wait. wait. We're going to hear from Sarah after the break. Well, if you... Oh. This is why you get a puppy. The little, the little kisses. Yes. Oh, and sh oh, Kane can't get close enough to snuggle in there. You're going to meet this little guy coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. And taking a look out and about in San Antonio right now. This is I-10 in Frio, 1604 at Calabria, but just a traffic alert to tell you about a situation we have been tracking throughout the morning. Uh, 410 at Nacogdoches, parts of the lanes have been shut off after a tanker spill early this morning. At last check, officers were still on the scene, still trying to clean it up, so if you can, try to avoid that area. It's a live time and Olivia's here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, all the right ingredients. The kisses on the chin, yes. the whimpers, and the little brow that's going and kind of getting furled up like, where's my home? Yes, this is Kane. He's a nine week old shepherd mix and he just wants to be adopted. Look we, at how cute he we is. We can't get it close. And those little eyes with the eyebrows going up. I don't know if you can see that in his ears. He is the most adorable little thing, and he was just trying to nuzzle in, and if he was getting any closer, he'd be behind you. He was just, it was like, oh, let me get, let me get yes. in there. So, nice short coat, probably easy to take care of, but with any puppy, you need lots of little toys to chew on. So Absolutely. That's, that's their little, like, stress reliever for him. So, uh, what you got going on as we head in toward New Year's? Yes, as we head in towards New Year's, the Moore Children's Foundation has offered to do a 20,000 challenge match. So, that means that your impact is doubled whenever you choose to give. I know end of year giving is coming up as we're just almost into 2020, so we ask that you would really think about donating to San Antonio Pets Alive, and you can do so by going to SanAntonioPetsAlive.org slash donate. And that will automatically be doubled yes. by that organization up to 20000 Yes, 000. and it ends on the 31st. Oh, wow. And, and of course, then you will get the tax write off and everything like that. So that's fantastic. Yes. Great way to double your money. And every dollar that c comes into San Antonio Pets Alive goes directly to our programs and services to help save the lives of dogs just like Kane and cats as well. It goes towards our medical needs, so I'm towards intake and just, you know, the daily care to take care of these sweet, sweet animals. And like she was talking about, it all stays right here locally. Mm -hmm. So, yes. well, if you'd like more information about that or little Kane with the eyebrows and the whimper. Okay, new little kisses. Just head on over to SanAntonioPetsAlive.org. Thank you, dear. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Kane is so cute. We're going from talking about dogs to talking about cats, the longest running musical in Broadway history. Sarah saw it nearly four decades <laughs> after pouncing onto the stage, Cats leaps onto movie screens. All right, so before we have a preview, Sarah, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um. Yeah. Okay, but it's hilarious because it's so bad. You should, you should still see it. <laughs> All right, Rick Damagella okay. has your preview. Tonight is a magical night. 
where I choose the cat that deserves a new life. Andrew Lloyd Webber's award-winning musical lives a new life in the film version of Cats. Here we go! <laughs> the Cats cast includes Judy Dench, Jason Derulo, Idris Elba, Ian McKellen, and Jennifer Hudson, who performs the signature song, Memory. Each cat has their own song which tells their story. And in memory is Grizabella's story. You know, she's the dejected cat. She's um, obviously heartbroken and, and, and just... just just torn. And so this is her chance to speak from her heart and, and, and just show her heart. Follow me if you dare to. Ballerina Francesca Hayward makes her film debut as the kitten, Victoria. It was very different for me as a dancer. I'm used to doing a show and telling stories like, you know, from start to finish. And so to have to break stories up like that, um, I had to really know my character very well. It's one of the nicest things about being an actor is that you work with people of different generations. And when you come to the point of acting, you're all equal, regardless of experience and sometimes of talent. Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, so <laughs> let's talk movie reviews. Cats is rated PG, doesn't seem to make a great impression with the critics. It ranked 19% on the tomato meter on Rotten Tomatoes. It scored the lowest out of all the movies that opened in theaters this weekend, but fans rated the movie way higher at 65%. Still but Sarah, not great. Sarah says. Okay. It is ridiculous. At one point, Ian McKellen, Sir Ian McKellen goes, meow, meow, meow. It's <laughs> crazy. And that critic's consensus of despite its formidable cast, this cat's adaptation is a clawful mistake that will leave most viewers begging to be put out of their musery. It's totally true. I absolutely believe that. So you wouldn't tell people to go see it? I want, I go see it. It's hilariously bad. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm serious. Okay. And speaking of movies, of course, you can't go to the movies without seeing The Rise of Skywalker. Lots of reviews coming out about this movie, even from our staff here at KSET. So our producer, Joy, says, ignore the critics. If you're a true Star Wars fan, you'll love this movie. She gave it 4.9. Out of five. Out that's of five. Awesome. Yeah, that's and not too bad. Photographer Timmy says he had a bad feeling about going into seeing the film, but as a lifelong Star Wars fan, he says it was so good he can't wait to see it again. He gave it a 4.5 out of five, and you saw it as well. I did. We did. We're ready. We're ready. Are they going to come back? I loved it. Let's see. You loved it. What would you say <laughs> yeah. out of five? Huh? Out of five, what do we got? Oh, I like Joy. Yes. Hey, Four point nine. <laughs> Don't hurt Yoda. I would never. Oh. <laughs> You gave it a, what, what is it? Yeah, 4.9. 4.9? I mean, yeah. What, did you just hit Yoda? No, I'm hitting you because oh, you're the bad works. guy. This is the bad guy one. I'm the bad guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm always the bad guy. <laughs> I do, as a Star Wars fan, I do have to say, Yoda should have never had a lifesaver. It goes against everything Ooh. he stands for. He is a master of the Force. Yeah, but you still have to learn Jedi stuff. Can we He's make you our, uh, our, can we make you our <laughs> senior Star Wars correspondent? <laughs> Let's go. Let's. All right. We're being yelled at today. 957, 48 degrees out. We'll be right back. Bye.